My story starts in um, my granddad's shed, and that's me at the age of four. And um, when I was there, my, I used to spend hours with my granddad in his shed at the bottom of the garden, and we used to take scraps of materials that he'd have left over from when he'd build shelves or um, desks for my mum and her two sisters, and we would create toys. And he used to make jewellery boxes, trucks for me and my cousins. You know, we just had great fun using scraps of materials. And before I even started secondary school, I'd learned about using pillar drills and what a lathe was and how to and what the different properties of materials. And I just had so much fun with technology. And when I got to school, secondary school, I became bored. I already knew how to use a plane and how to use it safe, safely. And I was so passionate about technology and this kind of made me quite bored. I was as bored in school and and then I got to GCSE and when I got to my GCSE um, I had to choose an option, a, a product design option or a resistant material option, an option for technology and I decided to go with what my friends were doing which was product design and um, our school had a theory that girls quietened down boys and too many boys were doing resistant materials so they ended up putting me and another girl in, um, in a class with 17 boys and for me that was interesting. I mean, I learned a lot about how boys approach technology. They like to use big saws and hammers and they like making <laughs> PlayStation racks and um, PlayStation storages and, you know, racks for their football boots. It was, it was mad. And, and when we came to choose our project, I decided to make a um, design a product for my granddad, not the granddad who has the shed a different, the other one, um, who he had arthritis and I decided to solve the problem of squeezing a tube. And I was 15 at the time, and um, this is my granddad, and yeah, he basically couldn't squeeze a tube, and I created something very simple, which would mean he could push the, put pressure on the, the lever and toothpaste would come out. It's very simple. And um, I was entered into some, to some competitions through school and um, went to these competitions and ended up winning the regional awards and going on to national finals. And for me, that was um, a massive success because... Not only could I experience meeting new people and other people who were doing similar things, but I got to speak to, um, you know, I was under pressure, I was being judged, and it was something I'd never experienced before. And I was quite shy then. And now, um, you know, I've got, this, I've got this confidence. If somebody wants to question me, I, I'll come up with a, you know, a good enough answer that I can. And um, my passion for technology had come back, and I was actually excited about solving problems using design. So I'd find a problem and I'd research it and solve it. Um, and I just I loved it and so decided to take my um, technology interests into A level and um, I decided to take on a challenge which our school was approached by um, the ITDG which is um, Intermediate Technology Development Group and they offered a sustainable design award and we could basically choose a brief and solve it use, but looking at sustainability at the same time and um, my, the brief I chose was transporting water. So I developed that brief a little bit further and decided to look at transporting water in Africa. And um, this, the, the one with the bucket is um, my water carrier. And that was something that it was very simple to produce. And it's something that I wanted people to design in Africa. So ignore what it looks like here because it was, some, it was using materials that I had available at school. But um, I, in, in Africa, I w would like people to use um, the locally sourced materials, tree branches, different thicknesses of branches to create a wheel. You know, it, was it was just an idea, and it was my first kind of step into the, looking into te technology in the third world. And I was looking at the problems that people had carrying water using um, a yoke or using water, um, carrying water using their head. And I looked at kind of issues that that could, could um, cause in the long, in the long run looking at musculoskeletal and kind of healthcare and decided that if I could if I could design a way in a product that people could actually push or pull and children could use as well that could carry up to five buckets of water this is just a two bucket but you can actually carry, you can make them longer depending on how tall you are and um, it, I used a bucket but you, you obviously design it to your jerry can shape and um, people could transport more water much easier so it was something that I'd kind of had my insight into and I had never been to Africa um, and I was kind of passionate about learning about Africa and about what people did and the livelihood and materials. So I just researched, and, and that's where I find that's why I find quite quite easy to research. Just ask people advice, you know, ask people what is actually what is Africa like. So I got to speak to experts and people who are classed as an expert on Africa. It was just something that I was really interested in. So when I came to my next year. Um, my A2 level, I decided to take a product that people use every day around the home 
and redesign it so it doesn't use electricity. Now, this was kind of looking at global warming and the issues of um, how much electricity and how many, how many fossil fuels we're burning. And it's, it was something that I was kind of... I, I started to look more into and think, oh, there must be something we can do here. And so it ended up, I ended up taking a fridge and looking to totally redesign it. And I looked at how... Um, we cooled, how we sweat, um, how fridges actually work, how air conditioners work. Um, and I came up with a really simple solution to um, the problem of cooling. And my fridge just uses water and the evaporation of water. And, um, but I took it to be so simple that I thought, well, not only could it be used in, in our country in the future, but it could be used in Africa as well. And I have all this research that I did the previous year. The previous year, my fridge could be used in Africa as well. So basically, I'll just run through quite simply how it works. But basically, the inner cylinder um, is where you would put your products. This is only a prototype, so do imagine bigger scale. And um, around the inner cylinder, the sheep's wool, and you add water to the sheep's wool, and as the water evaporates, you get, then by a heat transfer, you get cooling in, a, in a, the inner, inner compartment, which is completely dry. So that's, that was my initial idea, and that's what I came up with. And um, found that it, well, it worked in this country, so I was thinking, well, Africa, great, could work there. And um, I, this was when I finished my A-levels, I then entered a competition and I wrote a business plan um, about how I could see my fridge working. And um, I ended up winning and I decided to plan a trip to Africa without telling my parents because I wanted, I, they wanted me to go to university and I didn't really want to go. I was unsure of what I wanted to do. Um, you know, they, they wanted to push me in one direction and I wanted to go in a different one. So I deferred from university and I um, started planning this trip and then this money came in which is it just was perfect so I finally told them and I went to Africa I did some kind of settling in bits as well like I worked in a, a monkey rehabilitation center for a little while just so I could be in Africa um, and safe and then I kind of as I got more used to being in Africa and more used to the surroundings and the people I went and lived in a township in Namibia um, with a, a guy that I met who worked in a, ho a hostel that I was staying at, and he said, come and live with me and I'll translate for you, we'll show people how your fridge works, and come and experience real-life Africa. And that's exactly what I did. Um, you know, I've, I went on the safaris and I did the, the kind of touristy things, but for me to actually go live in a township, eat caterpillars and, um, you know, have, have spinach cakes that, you know, I was watching people make was just a totally different experience. And I was scared. I, I'm, I mean, it was a big risk for me, but it was, I could actually see my products in use. I could show people how to use them, how to make them. I could, um, you know, I was, I was collecting water. I was, I was looking at materials. I was looking at how this person could set up a business. It was something that was, it was incredible. It was such a fantastic and rewarding experience. And, um, and then, you know, this is where I was living. And um, you know, they said to me, you were never, the, we, we never have white people in here. Um, we take the tourists around the outside. So for me, it was a totally different experience. And I guess it was them as the people there as well, because they have never experienced interacting with people who's coming into their township and saying, well, this is a suggestion for an idea. And again, it was just something that I had to kind of take on and just be brave about it and, you know, just not give up. And um, while I was there, I then um, ended up staying for longer, cancelled my flight that my mum booked for me and stayed longer, and then decided, well, you know, I'll come back and I'll see what happens from there. And when I came back, I was approached by Nesta, and Nesta said, we really like what you're doing, um, you know, you've had some fantastic ideas. Then they managed to hear about me through the Sustainable Design Award, and they then put me forward, and I ended up getting a grant from Nesta, who who then gave me mentoring and I kind of worked with a creative partner and all this was such a valuable experience for me because um, I'd had my ideas but I needed more help where do I go you know who do I ask for and, and this just you can you know this was the answer and um, then I was put forward for the, this award called the woman of the future award and ended up winning the technology category last year and from then on you know things are just going from strength to strength you know people are hearing about my products I'm working on you know developing I've got two fridge ideas one which people can produce themselves so I don't if people my fridge is that simple I don't think that I should go out there and say buy my fridges if if this fridge could allow people to set up their own businesses but then I have a the second idea which is I'm working on now which is slightly more advanced which will then be looking at to sell to pharmaceutical companies and um you know that's that's where I'm at I'm, I'm kind of looking to inspire young women I'm making a booklet at the minute to to tell people to give role models and role model advice that you know interview big people people that are really well known and to tell their story and just to encourage other girls to do the same thing and that's where i'm at right now and i'm doing my degree <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs>